This morning, new allegations detailing just how far former President Trump went to try and overturn the 2020 election. Multiple sources telling ABC News Trump allegedly pressured Arizona's then-governor to overturn the state's election results. As first reported by the Washington Post, Trump allegedly called former Republican Governor Doug Ducey to speak about the more than 10,000 votes he lost by, insisting if the state found enough voter fraud, it could swing the election in his favor. ABC News also learning Trump dispatched former Vice President Mike Pence to pressure Ducey into finding fraudulent votes. Pence reportedly called Ducey multiple times following the election, but did not follow Trump's orders. And when no fraud was found, the pressure from Trump continued. That hail to the chief ringtone was Trump again calling Ducey as Ducey was certifying the state's election in front of cameras. Ducey muting the call, later confirming it was Trump on the other end of the line. Uh Uh-oh, drama. Well, very expected drama. Donald Trump, as you guys saw there, a little bit of that ABC News report, was making more perfect phone calls. First time it was in Georgia, if you guys remember that. But now Governor Ducey out in Arizona, these revelations are then coming out. It includes his vice president, Mike Pence, as well. So he, of course, he had to go on TV and try to walk his way out of this one, too. If he was a part of it, maybe we'll see. Watch what Pence said. You are clearly saying you did not pressure the governor, but were you being pressured by Mr. Trump to get those, to influence Doug Ducey? And did you talk about this with the special counsel? Uh, no, I, I, I don't remember any pressure. Look, the president and I, things came to a head at the end, uh, Margaret. I've spoken about very openly, and the president and I continue to have. Uh, a strong difference, uh, uh, but in, in the days of November and December, this was a this was an orderly process. You'll remember there were more than sixty lawsuits underway. States were engaging in appropriate reviews, and that uh, these contacts were no more than that. Uh, you guys play the beginning of that again. You don't have to do full screen. I just want to see his face because it's a constant look that Mike Pence. I think if it's just his face, I don't want to talk about it. It's normal, but I feel like this is a. I'm gonna come off as very pensive, and I'm really thinking about it. Like, bro, it's okay, just be normal and real. As a matter of fact, it might help you because I feel like he's not in a great place right now already. But he's there denying the substance of that. He's denying what it is that's being reported as far as his part in this, which honestly could come out pretty decently because it didn't work out. Or maybe the pressure he was putting on, potentially putting on Ducey, didn't work out either. And now he can wash his hands of it. Just say it, bro. You're running against the guy. But again, he's afraid of losing that same base. And again, you guys remember in Georgia, there was a previous phone call that was very similar. So how hard is it to believe that he would also lean on Governor Ducey to do the same thing in a state like Arizona? Was he doing it in California? No, he's doing it in Arizona and Georgia. Remember this? Listen. I just want to find. Uh, 11,780 votes. He's currently under investigation for this phone call to Georgia's Secretary of State, accused of meddling in that contest, something he denied again during a rally this weekend. You buying it, Jess? Are you buying Uh, it? No, I love that they asked Mike Pence. Did he ask you to ask Ducey to do illegal stuff? And Mike Pence is like, well, things were really intense. We had a lot of disagreements <laughs> towards the end. And it's like, bro, just answer the question. <laughs> did he or did he not? That sounds like a yeah. That sounds like a yeah. He asked me to do a bunch of illegal stuff and I said no. And that was the nature of the disagreement. Because why would your brain go to the place of we had a lot of disagreements towards the end? If that wasn't one of them, it's pretty much clear he's answering the question. And you're right that he's thinking way too much about how he's coming across because he knows he was involved with a regime that was doing some pretty bad stuff, that was attempting a coup, that was calling this guy who's responsible for certifying the election in this state while he's on air. And he's ignoring the president's call, who is asking him to find votes and overturn an election. This happened in the United States of America. If that's not insane to you, I don't know what is. But I think, you know, we covered earlier, the the Trump rally. Uh, there are a lot of interviews that we're going to cover at the Trump rally, where it's very obvious what kind of people we're dealing with and why they're still supporting someone who attempted a, a coup in a country that likes democracy to some extent. Not everybody. It turns <laughs> out Trump's base maybe not because finding 11,780 votes 
does not mean I think you miscounted. That means find them wherever you can. It doesn't matter. An extensive part of that Washington Post article that was talking about it. Uh, Mike Pence, uh, I guess, was head faking in and out whether or not he's gonna actually do something and follow up on what Trump was demanding him to do. It's a lot of details that again, uh, multiple people that were close to it, of course, talking anonymously about it. It's just constant about what it is that's falling apart. And again, you're running for president, bro, and seeing Pence. Uh, <laughs> there has to be something you have to do a little bit differently. Uh, look, Ron DeSantis is trying something, it just ain't working, it seems.